Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I want to demonstrate how to use masking in Topaz Labs Sharpen AI. There are often times where we don't want to sharpen the entire image. For example, I have this image of this clownfish and I shot through glass at the Niagara Falls Aquarium. And if I zoom in, you could see that it's pretty soft. And you know, I was shooting through the aquarium glass. Of course, it was full of water. So it's kind of soft. So I would like the clownfish to be sharper, but I don't necessarily want the anemone and the other parts of the aquarium to be sharp as well. I want everyone to be looking at the clownfish. This is where masking will come into play. So I'm going to take this image and send it over into Topaz Lab Sharpen AI by right clicking on it, going down to edit in, and then down to Topaz Sharpen AI going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments with these default settings and click edit. Now Lightroom is creating that file with those specifications and it's opening it up into Sharpen AI. Now typically what I like to do when I use Sharpen AI is to start out in comparison view and try to compare four Sharpen models to one another. So I'll go to comparison view right now and in the top left hand corner I happen to have the standard view and you can see that it's updated and I'm going to reposition it so we could see our fish and it will re-render and there is the standard view next to that I happen to have the motion blur very blurry view now if I wanted to switch that out with a different one I could just make that active by clicking on it and then go to a different sharpen model over here and click on that below that um, standard view on the left hand side is the out of focus very blurry view and then to the right of that is the too soft very blurry view now typically what i like to do is i like these very blurry models you can see i have the too soft very blurry i have the out of focus very blurry and the motion blur very blurry and i also like the standard view so that's why i happen to have those four now usually too what i'll do is I want the model parameters on all four of those set to auto. You can see right now the standard view isn't on auto. So I'll put that on auto. It's going to reconfigure the sliders and re-render the image. And then motion blur, I have to put on auto. And let that update. And then the autofocus very blurry. That's not on auto either. And then finally, the too soft, very blurry, and that is on auto. I want them all on auto because I try to get an apples to apples, oranges to oranges comparison between them to see which one on auto at least looks best. And they all look pretty comparable. Um, I'm going to zoom in a bit more. And I'll reposition over to here. Now they each have to re render. Whenever you reposition or you zoom in or zoom out, Everything will have to re-render, so you might have to wait a second or three. Now, actually, they all look about the same. There's before on the standard model, and there's after. Before, after. I'll go over to very, very blurry. There's before, and there's after. I'll go down to too soft, very blurry. There's before, and there's after. And I'll go over to out of focus, very blurry. There's before, and there's after. They all look very similar. I would say of the four, the out of focus, very blurry, might just be very slightly better. So I'm going to pick that one. I'll make that active by make sure I clicked on it. Then I'll go to single view and let it render again. Now I'll come in and I'll move the sliders around. There really isn't much noise, so I don't think I have to worry about the suppressed noise slider. So I'm going to move this. Uh, to the right and just keep removing blur there's before and there's after before after but if you look i'm going to go up here and let it render and you see how it made all this sharp up here and it kind of looks funny i don't want it to sharpen any of those areas in the background that are out of focus i wanted to just sharpen the clownfish so that's where the masking is going to come in. Now to get to the masking, there's a couple different ways. You could just go down here and click down, oops, click down here 
and turn on the mask here or you could just go over to here on select and just turn this on and what it will do it will try to automatically find the subject and you can see it really didn't find the subject there really isn't a I guess a strong subject in this as far as the AI is concerned if you had a person here or you had you know even like a rabbit isolated in a field it would find the rabbit but here it's harder to find the um, clownfish in the anemone so uh, what I'm going to do is refine this mask by clicking on refine and then I'm going to clear the mask so it's completely clear now when it's clear that means no sharpening is done anywhere on the image so I want to add I want to add sharpening and I'm going to then get the brush and you can see that there's um, some attributes for the brush here is brush size softness and opacity I want the opacity all the way up maybe softness somewhere around 30 percent and you also could affect the brush size with the bracket key the left bracket key makes it uh, smaller the right bracket key larger and then I'm just going to come in and paint on the fish now you'll notice when I do that I get a red overlay so that's telling me where I'm painting so that's just help a helpful guide so we'll do that kind of go in here too now I'm going to get a bit of a harder brush so I'll bring softness down and I'm going to reduce the size considerably by hitting the left bracket key so that I could come in here and get the edges more readily because it was just too soft and it had a lot of feathering on the edge here so I wasn't really getting the edge of the the fish's snout that well a little bit of a larger brush you can see each time I click with the left mouse button that red overlay comes on to let me know that it's working here oh, I think I'll get a quite a big larger brush and make sure I get all this up in here real well now you can see over here where I painted on the mask and it's basically where the clownfish is popping his or her head out of the anemone so pretty much like that now if you made a mistake you could just click on the minus brush and then take it away from wherever you made your mistake I don't think I really made any mistake here but try to get a little better in here like that so I think that's pretty good so I'm done I'm gonna click update all right now it's rendered and I'll get a before after there's before there's our blurry clownfish and there's after so you could see it it did a nice job and I'm only sharpening the clownfish I'll go up here where we were last time and let it render now I'll do before after up here before after you could see that is unchanged we just sharpened the clownfish before after so I'm going to click apply and that will add that sharpening to that image and it will return us back to Lightroom and then we could look at the original image and the sharpened image next to one another we'll go back to the original image I'll zoom in all right so there is our blurry clownfish and here is our sharpened clownfish here's our blurry clownfish and our sharpened clownfish now as I mentioned when you do use masking often it will detect the subject perfectly I found it works really well but in this case with this image it just wasn't expecting I guess a clownfish to be popped out of an anemone so it really couldn't find the clownfish uh, that well so I had to modify the mask and that's how you go about doing it it's still very easy to do Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <music>